Christmas? Christmas. Not what you expected to hear, right? You expected to hear Happy New Year, and so Happy New Year. But it is still Christmas today, in fact, the eighth day of Christmas, right? We, uh, we fall into that schedule that our culture puts in front of us. We use Advent calendars that don't even count down all the days of Advent. They only give you a beer starting in December, right? You don't have that Advent calendar. Uh, but Advent started November 27th, right? Advent, those four weeks, and then Christmas Day, day one of Christmas. So we're in Christmas, so we're going to sing Christmas music today. So we're glad that you're here to be a part of it. Welcome to worship, our favorite. We love Christmas music. Uh, we're grateful that you're here. I'm Rob James, blessed to be one of your pastors. Good to see those of you that are here in person and those of you that are worshiping online. If you're online, wish each other a happy new year. Use those comments to say happy new year. When you see a friend worshiping with you online, you can reply to them. It's a great way for us to connect. If you're here in person, uh, hopefully you'll fill out one of those attendance cards in front of you, one for every household. We'll drop those, and if you have offering to give, all that will go in the basket on our way out of worship today. Uh, so you can take care of that later on, but fill out those attendance cards, not just so we know you're here, but to help us connect with those who are not here. Um, we're going old school, classic, no screen today, so everything's in the bulletin in the ELW, the uh, cranberry hymnal in your pew in front of you uh, so you can follow along there if you're in person if you're online you can find the bulletin on our website oslcrockford.com uh, or just follow along with us in worship uh, one change our offertory instead of the hymn we're going to have special music today so grateful for our uh, three musicians uh, coming together to share their gift with us uh, for that offertory Few announcements to highlight. There's a lot more going on than this, but uh, we kept it brief for today. Uh, if you did not yet get your first annual Our Savior's Christmas ornament, there's still some out there. You can grab that today before they're gone. Uh, if you weren't with us for Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, make sure to pick that up and add it to your tree. How many of you have already undecked the halls at home? Uh, so undecking the halls will happen this Saturday at 9 a.m. So we encourage, invite everyone to come and be a part of that. As you see, there's a lot that we do to decorate for Advent and Christmas. And so if you're available this Saturday, come out and help us undeck. But put your ornament away so that next year as you're uh, resetting up the tree, you can pull that out and, and remember this year. We have, of course, our Rooted coming up. It was such a joy in December to have such a wonderful, huge crowd. Every third Wednesday of the month, at least through May, uh, we gather together on Wednesday night. We have a wonderful dinner together, some fellowship and learning, uh, and some singing together. And so I encourage you, register so we make sure we have enough food, because we get really, really good food and we want to have enough of it. Uh, but make that your plan. Come and join us the third Wednesday of every month. Really excited for our upcoming bridge event. Bridge, the bridge is the space of that we, what we call our old sanctuary. We're excited to use that space for more communal ministry, inviting friends to come and join us that maybe aren't in worship with us. Uh, this one on January 13th, coming up that Friday, will probably lean a little bit more faith-based than, than what our total intention is. But what we want to do with these events is use different forms of art to bring people together into relationship, to talk about different things. Uh, so we're excited to bring in one of my friends, uh, Pastor Brian Spar. He's now a hospital chaplain and wrote a great little book on grief from his own stories and the stories of being a hospital chaplain. And so we're just gonna kind of deal with how do we enter this new year, knowing that many of us bring grief into the year with us, not knowing what all lies ahead. How do we live as people of faith? in this, and so he's an amazing musician. Hopefully he lets me jump in with him on some of the songs. Uh, we had fun together many times before, and so we'll do some great music. Uh, we've got Pastor Mike Thomas from Zion Lutheran here in Rockford, also does art, and he'll share some of his art and how his emotions and grief uh, uh, contributes to the art that he creates. So we've got a lot going on. So that night, invite your friends, come out. The space is gorgeous. If you don't know the space, it's a gorgeous space and a great way to just connect in community. So January 13th, hope you'll be with us for that bridge event. Trivia night, who's got a trivia team together already? You guys haven't put, I know you were like all on trivia teams before. Uh, so you can either sign up by yourself or get a team up to eight people or anywhere in between. 
Uh, our youth are heading to Mission South Dakota this summer on a mission trip. And so this is a fundraiser to support that mission trip. And so we'll have a trivia night here at our Saviors. So come on out, have some fun. We'll have dinner provided. Just a great night of fellowship and raising some funds for our youth. So uh, you do not want me on your team, but find other people that you do want on your team and come and join us for trivia night. You can see we're already plan planning for Lent. It'll be here before we know it. Uh, we're going to do an adult Bible study video series again. Pastor Scott will lead that on the Wednesdays uh, during noontime. So we'll have worship and a soup luncheon and uh, another adult study uh, during Lent. So you can check out all those details. Thank you to everyone that sponsored uh, our coffee fellowship time in 2022 in celebration of a birthday or anniversary or something else. Uh, it was a success. Not only did we get to celebrate you, but we actually brought in more funds than we used to with the collection basket. Uh, and if you don't know, the point of that was we don't want guests to come and feel like they can't have a donut because they didn't bring a dollar and didn't put a dollar in the basket. And so you sponsoring that allows us to make that just a ministry of hospitality and welcome every Sunday. The calendar is out there. And so if you want to pick your dates for 2023, you can go ahead and do that as well. Thanks to everyone uh, that contributes to that. You can sign up. Uh, right? You are sponsoring coffee hour as coffee hour is. You're not buying a cake. You're not bringing in cupcakes. You're not doing anything. You're just simply sponsoring so that our volunteers who do a great job can make coffee and have donuts. Uh, but you can certainly sign up to serve that day to help so that we can see you and, and celebrate whatever it is that we're celebrating with you that day. There is more going on. Uh, but for now, I, let's worship together. I invite you to stand as you're able as we turn to our call to worship. Christ is with us. God comes to us in Jesus. Fully God, fully human. Son of Abraham and Sarah. We, too, are on Christ's family tree. God claims us as beloved children of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray. God of all, as we read of Jesus' family, full of men and women, both wonderful and flawed, give us gratitude for all who have come before us and made us who we are. Help us to remember that more than anything, we are a part of your beloved family. Amen. Please be seated.
Today's reading comes from the Holy Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1. You know, Paul, I feel bad. We haven't had our assisting ministers doing scripture reading anymore. Do you want to do today's reading? You'll find out. An account of the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. And Judah the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Aram, and Aram the father of Amnadab, and Amnadab the father of Nashan, and Nashan the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of King David. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah, and Solomon the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abijah, and Abijah the father of Asaph, and Asaph the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, and Joram the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Amos, and Amos the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jeconiah, Jeconiah, and his brothers at the time of the deportion to Babylon. And after the deportion to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Salamthiel, and Salamthiel the father of Zubababel, and Zubababel the father of Abud, and Abud the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azor, and Azor the father of Zadok, and Zadok the father of Akim, and Akim the father of Eluid, and Eluid the father of Eleazar, and Eleazar the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the Messiah, 14 generations. This is the gospel of the Lord. I'm gonna, we've got some kids here. Do you want to come up and join me for a minute? Any kids that are here? Good morning. How's it going? Good. Good. Do you think I said all those names right? Um, pro- pro- probably not because it was a different country. Yeah, right? And there are some hard names that I don't know how to pronounce. Until we got to Joseph and Mary and Jesus, there were some different names. Does your family, are there any names in your family that are kind of hard to pronounce? Hey, mommy and daddy. Uh, I don't, mommy and daddy? I don't think so. Don't think so? No answer uncles with names that are hard to say? We're going to talk about our family. Who's filled out a family tree before? Have you ever seen a family tree? Do you know what a family tree is? A family tree is not a tree that you climb in your yard. A family tree is a tree you make on paper. And so a family tree tells us who's a part of our family and who we came from. Everything we just read told us about the people that came before Jesus and how Jesus was related to them because of his parents were the descendants of his grandparents, who were the descendant of great-grandparents, who are the descendant of great-great-grandparents, right? And so it told us all the way back of how this story kept going. And so if you were making a family tree, who do you think goes in the bottom box? Um, the, the lowest person. Yeah, the so... Lowest person, which is, um, I think it's youngest is Robert, is that right? Yeah, Robert's the youngest. In this case, yeah, you'd put yourself... And since you have brothers, right, all three of you would be here at the bottom because you're all children of your parents, right? And so you three would go down. And then we're going to put our parents here. Yep, so the three of you go in the bottom. And then, and then like, right, Grandpa Al. Yeah, so your parents go here, and then your mom's parents go here. Let's, it doesn't matter. Your mom's parents go here, and your dad's parents go here. And look, it, it doesn't look like that many right now, right? There's the three of you and your parents and your grandparents. But then if you add it, if you go further, then you'd have two parents for them and two parents for them and two parents for them and two, and all of a sudden, you look at how this tree is gonna get really big on the top, isn't it? Yeah, it's right here. It's probably gonna be like right here for Alfred. 
Yeah, great grandpa Alfred would be up there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then great great grandparents would be even more, and then great 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 grandparents would be even more, right? Because our family tree comes from all these different people that met in different places and who became a part of our family as we became part of that, right? Kind of cool, isn't it? So you can fill this out later, and you can, you can start with the three of you on the bottom, and you can see how far you can go. If, well, I haven't gotten to the other side yet. <laughs> so it might be kind of fun, right? Your parents might be able to tell you, it'll be interesting to see how far back your parents know. Can they tell you their parents and their grandparents and their great-grandparents? But then this is for all of us here. What does this say? Brothers and sisters in... Yeah, because we're all part of God's family, right? Yeah. And so it says, for you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. It's from Galatians 3.26. That's in the New Testament. Um, and from two verses later, it says, there's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We're all part of God's family. Is there anybody that we say, eh, they don't get to be a part of God's family? No. No, of course not, right? God made all of us. What about like if there's a bully at school and we really don't like the bully? Do we say, oh, they don't get to be part of it? No. No, right? God made all of us. What about when we're upset with our brothers and we're fighting over a toy? Do we say, ah, oh, God doesn't love you as much as God loves me? No. No. Sorry, Robert. That's, that's true, right? You're all equal, all of us here. Right? But not just people that go to church. Everybody we meet, everybody gets to be a part of God's family tree. And so it reminds us, as we meet people, wherever we meet other people, that we're all part of the same family of God, right? So you can work on your family trees later, and you can be reminded, yes? Um, when you do your family tree, you mm -hmm. don't have to go all the way to the end of your family with, like, the narrow fives or the hubble hubble. It's not like that family. Not that far back, no. Because yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I'm sure your parents do, so they'll be happy to help with however far back you want to go. Yeah. E even to the time before there were humans, homo sapiens, people, whatever. Yeah. Yep. We can, it'll be fun to see how far back we can go, right? And remind, be reminded that God's been with those people all this time. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this new year. Thank you for our family and for our family of faith. Give us eyes to see you in all people. In Jesus' name, we pray and play. Amen. Do you want a few copies in case you run out of room and want to do it over? Here. You can take both of them. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and from the Holy Spirit who moves in and through us with every breath we take. Amen. If you've been with us in worship uh, since September, you know that all fall we moved through the Old Testament. And as we moved through the Old Testament, hopefully our takeaway was that we saw how God is faithful. We heard the word covenant a lot. God made a covenant with Abraham. God made a covenant with Moses. God keeps making these covenants, these promises that are greater than a promise we can keep. And so we saw that even when people get it wrong, God remains faithful. And God not only honors God's part of the covenant, but God remains faithful faithful and fulfills the part that we are supposed to even when we don't even when we think we know better even when we think we can go a different direction God continues to move and we saw as the stories had drastic twists and turns and went in different directions how God kept working to remind the people that God was with them and so today we move into the Gospel of Matthew, and we'll be in the Gospel of Matthew now through Easter in April as we're in this new-for-us narrative lectionary. Uh, we've, we've done the Old Testament, now we'll do Gospel. After Easter, we'll move into a New Testament book. 
But for now, we move into this gospel. And although Matthew does give us part of the Christmas story that we know and love, uh, it opens with this genealogy of Jesus. And it's easy to quickly read through the genealogy of Jesus and mispronounce all the names and just keep moving on. But there is a lot going on here as we look at this text. It does help us connect to the larger God story and see God's faithfulness, to be reminded and, and look back to see how God has been with the people through all these different generations, that even in these stories where it seemed like the people were on their own, God was still there, right? 14 generations until the Babylonian exile. We had the map up if you were here that week and we looked at what it was for the people of Israel to be exiled to Babylon and you can imagine you know, having family killed, having your city destroyed, being taken to a far off land, it feels like God is not with you. And yet again, the story shows us how God was with the people even through that generation. This genealogy connects Jesus, the Messiah, to this God story as the divine, but it also helps us see and know and name Jesus' humanity. We believe in Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, fully God and fully human. And so it helps us connect to both parts of this story. And while it might be about connecting Jesus to his Jewish lineage, uh, Jewish people, especially in this day, loved seeing that family tree, that genealogy. And so it's important that this is shared in this place. And you'd think that it's to connect Jesus to his Jewish lineage, which it does. But it also shows us that four of the women who are named which of course, even naming women in a genealogy in this day when it's written would be unheard of. Four of the women were Gentiles, not Jewish. And their contributions to the story of God moving through God's people uh, all have very, let's say, interesting uh, contributions to how God was able to use them for God's purpose. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and read the story of Rahab in the Bible and see what Rahab's profession was and how she was providing for herself and how God used her for God's story, uh, right? But it, it helps us see that, that God isn't just in this prudish, you know, do it the way that we think this book tells us we're supposed to do it, uh, way of faith, but it tells us that God is in the mess, God is with us in all things, and God uses us in all ways for God's purpose. I think the genealogy of Jesus is an interesting text to hear on this first day of this new year. Because as we look back at Jesus' genealogy and where Jesus came from, hopefully we see how we are part of the story today as followers of Jesus. Right? This looks back before Jesus, but we see then how the generations since have connected us back to Jesus' story and to the stories that came before. How many of you have done Ancestry or 23andMe, one of the DNA tests? Quite a few. How many of you, it's because your kids got it for you for Christmas one year because they didn't know what else to get you? Yeah. Of those of you who haven't done it, how many of you, it's because you're a stubborn Swede and you know you're a Swede and you don't need to spit in a tube for it to tell you you're a Swede? Figured. There, of course, has been a great rise, partly as the technology, uh, right, has been developed and it's made uh, uh, affordable for us to, to do these tests, to try and connect to that story, but also just perhaps because there's a growing interest. We want to know where we've come from. We want to be connected to something bigger than ourselves. In this digital age, when we can see so much from so many places and we get distracted by all that's happening around the world now and we feel lost, we want to know that we're part Part of a bigger story. How many of you have done story worth where you get a prompt each week and, and write part of your story so it can be passed on from dinner? How many of you got that as a Christmas gift from your kids because they didn't know what else to get you? You might if tell your kids to watch this sermon. If they need ideas for next year, just tell them to they should watch this sermon. We've gotten both for both sets of our parents and it's gone really well. Story worth, if you don't know, uh, sign up, you get an email each week 
with a prompt and, and you share your story. So we did Woody's uh, last year and this year my parents did it and so we're waiting to put their book together now of their different stories. And even as we get the email responses since we're the ones that paid for it and signed up, it's, it's interesting to learn some of the stories of just our parents, stories that we didn't know, that we haven't ever heard. But you can imagine how it's fun to think back of the stories of the generations that come before us. And as we want to be connected to something bigger, as we want to be reminded that as the world seems so big and there's so much information that we're a part of something, I think this also helps us say, how is our story, how is my story a part of the bigger story? And how will others know my story? What will they know of my story? And how, hopefully, as people of faith, how God was active and moving through the ups and downs and the twists and turns and the ways when I maybe had a part of my story that didn't look like I wanted anything to do with God, how was God still active in that? And so as we think about not only where we've come from and who's come before us, and not only our story and, and the stories that happened before us, I think it's an appropriate time for us on this new year to to look at those, to reflect greater on those. How many of you are resolution people still? None of us, I love it. Not a single person raised your hand. We're all like, that is the stupidest thing. We've given up on that. If you're a resolution person, more power to you. You know, we're supporting you however many times you need to get to the gym in the next three weeks. Maybe this is a different way to talk about the same thing, but instead of resolutions, I think as we reflect back, we ask some helpful questions. Hopefully you've taken time to be still recently. The end of the year, the start of a new year is a good time to just pause and to ponder. And if you're a journaler, to journal. And if you're a conversationalist, to find someone to share with or uh, whatever that looks like for you. But I think as we move out of 2022, hopefully, you can stop and pause and say, where did I experience God's faithfulness this year? How did I know God's presence in my life through the ups and downs? I think we can agree, right? We all have come to the point where we know that, that life is a mix of emotions. We don't uh, catalog and categorize and say, well, now this day is a day for sadness and grief, and then tomorrow will be a day for joy and happiness. We know that everything comes at us all at the same time and everything comes out and even in the midst of our grief we can experience joy and even at our happiest times we can also be filled with an emotion that wants us to shed tears as we reflect on who's not here or what we've missed out on and so we know all of that comes at the same time but as it does we say where did we experience God's faithfulness we're willing to pause and look back at the year and think about the ups and the downs and all around, where did we experience God with us? I'll save some of mine for the annual meeting coming up on where I saw God at work in and through us as a community. But as an individual, where did you experience God with you and when did others see or experience God in and through you? Right? If we are people who believe in this story, believe that we're part of this ongoing genealogy, believe that by the blessing of the Holy Spirit, Christ is still at work and we as people of faith are still called to be a part of this story, then how are we open to others experiencing God through us? Maybe it was through an intentional act, a way that we served. Maybe it was happenstance when we paused and took time to listen to a friend over coffee that we didn't plan on. How did others see, experience, know God through you? So maybe it's not resolutions, but I think as we move into 2023, we can talk about intentional discipleship. Yes, this is preaching to the choir. You are the people that showed up for New Year's Day worship. How many of you made it up till midnight? Wow, a lot of you. How many of you were in bed by 10 o'clock? I know I'm preaching to the choir when I speak this, but as we move into 2023, I think as a community of faith, it's good for us to say, what does this intentional discipleship look like? As we pray on our own and with others, what does it look like for us to commit to a life of prayer? 
What does it look like for us to commit to a life of worship? Again, preaching to the choir. To study, to be in God's word, not only on our own, but with others so that we can engage and let the Holy Spirit be at work as we read from God's living word. What does it look like to serve others with whatever gifts we've been given? To go and share by caring for others in need. To encourage one another, not just those that we're comfortable with, not just those that look like us or act like us or talk like us or show up to worship with us, but what does it look like for us to encourage others in our daily life and to be a blessing to others as we lift that up? What does it look like for us to give of our resources, the gifts that we've been blessed with for the sake of ministry, for the sake of blessing others? And what does it look like for us to share? Share our witness live a life in a way that others want what we have, but also tell them about the joy that we know in living as a follower of Jesus and inviting them. My good friend, Pastor Dave Daubert, wrote a book because for the past 15 years, every church has put up a sign that says, all are welcome, right? And we mean it, and hopefully you've heard that from me for two years, right? Especially those of you that know someone who identifies in the LGBTQ community. We've said and we will continue to say that this is a church where we want everyone to know you are welcome as you are and that God loves you as you are. This is a community that welcomes us. And so yes, all are welcome. But in a world where we're only seeing the number of people in church in a rapid decline, we can't just sit in here and let everyone read the welcome sign and come in on their own? What does it look like for us to go and invite others to know what we've experienced, to share our own story, no matter how messy it is, of where God has been at work through the ups and downs and all arounds, to invite them to know that there are others who want to be with them and support them and learn from them and encourage them and serve with them and study with them and be in community together to know that all of us are a part of this ongoing story. It's wonderful to be able to look at this text, and even if we can't pronounce the names, to see that God was at work from one generation to the next, moving this story forward until we get to the story of Christmas and the story of Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, Savior of the world, come for all of us. But as the story has kept going, Let's not forget that we are a part of God's ongoing story. Let's go and share the good news. Amen. And the hymn can be found on 274. 274.
Thank you, Scott, or Pastor Rob, for sparing me from the 14 generations. <laughs> Gathered as sisters and brothers in Christ, let us affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and in life. With wonder and thanksgiving for God's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Merciful God, broaden the church's response, hospitality and welcome. Open our hearts to any in need of refuge and help, especially those who are persecuted. Prosper the work of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. God of grace, living God, restore the health of the soil and the seas and the air. Increase the joy and praise of all living things. In the coming year, strengthen local, national, and international efforts to prevent further harm to the environment. God of grace, liberating God, deliver your people from cruel oppression increase justice in every nation, and keep the dream of freedom alive. In this new year, bring the blessing of peace and put an end to violent conflict throughout the world. God of grace, uplifting God, raise all who are bowed down by trouble and need, especially members of our Savior's Lutheran Church, Johanna, Shirley, Betty, Gert, Fred and Lois. Ron, Kent, Dave, Dave, Jerry, Maureen, Don, Lloyd, Charlie and Jill, Elsie, Madison, Paula, Roger, Marie, Wing, and families and friends of our Savior's Lutheran Church, Mary, Phyllis, Jamie, Brandon, Jerry, Dave, Oakland, Elijah, Steve, Frank, Tom, Alex. And individuals and families living in poverty. Protect and nurture all children. Sustain those who parent, teach, and care for the young. God of grace. Abiding God, accompany this community in the coming year. Increase our love for one another and the neighbors we serve. Enrich our worship and deepen our faith. Sustain our pastors and all who minister in your name. God of grace. Loving God, the holy innocents who perish in every generation are safe in your keeping. We give you thanks and praise for all the faithful who have gone before us into everlasting life with you. We especially hold in prayer Kristen Elliott and family as they grieve the death of Stephen Elliott who died on December 26th. God of grace. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment to share that peace with each other. For the first time, this year. That's peace. That's peace.
is born, the King of creation, coming to the world forlorn as Lord of every God, throughout generations, you have sustained your people, providing us with all we need to survive and thrive. We offer now what we have so generously been given, our possessions and our very selves. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
For those worshiping at home, now is the time to gather together your elements and bring them into the place of worship. And receive these words. Take and eat, this is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink, this is the blood of Christ given for you. For us in this place, the table is set and all are welcome. Please be seated. Hymn number 300.
Jesus. We thank you, wondrous God, that throughout the generations you have been moving us toward love. You have given us the greatest gift of love in your son Jesus and in these gifts of bread and wine. You have poured out your love for us this day. As we receive this gift through the, this feast, strengthen us to share your love with all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Christ has come for the, all the nations of all the world, for all of creation, Christ has come for you. God has been with the generations that have come before us. God is with us, and God will be with the generations who come after us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may you know this day and always the love God has for you. May we go together to share the love of God with all the world, Go in the name of God the Creator, Jesus the Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending carol is number 270. Number 270.
next week, we'll return to our regular schedule, 8.30 worship, 9.30 coffee hour and Sunday school, and then 10.30 worship. Hope to see you next week. Happy New Year. Go in peace. Rejoice, for God is with us. Thanks be to God. <laughs>